My name is Dr. Robert Swift. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I am uh, the director of Blue Sky Orthopedics here in Naples, Florida. I'm here to discuss uh, sacroiliac dysfunction and sacral fractures and how they cause pain and uh, issues. The sacroiliac joint is complex. It's comprised of the sacrum and the ilium, and it's the space in between. It's surrounded by a bunch of uh, ligaments, and the pelvis in and of itself, in a normal situation, has a slight rotational moment when we walk, and it's, and it's maintained by those ligaments. Over time, or with injury to those ligaments, that nutational effect will get greater and greater, almost like your wheels are out of alignment on your car, and that'll create inflammation and arthritis in the SI joint, and that can create pain. It can mimic hip pain, it can mimic low back pain, it can mimic buttock pain, and it can create some confusion. I think SI joint pain is more common than we believe. It's somewhere between 15 to 30% of patients that present with low back pain. Normally, I notice an SI joint dysfunction in patients uh, in clinic when I see them walking into the room. They just have a little bit of an uneven gait. Maybe they have a shorter step on that injured side. They also have pain when they're sitting there in the interview. They're uncomfortable. They'll shift like me right now so from side to side. They'll kind of tilt their side up that they, where they complain of pain. Uh, they'll have pain raising, raising from a seated position. They'll have pain uh, going up and down stairs or if they bend down very far and, and flex uh, their hip and their knee, they'll have posterior buttock pain. Well, patients with chronic low back pain, what I'm looking for, especially with pain in the SI joint or the buttock, uh, I want to make sure it's not the SI joint. So I'm looking for past histories of falls or missteps or car accidents. Those are, those are things that can lead you down that path uh, of SI joint injury and the physical exam is important. Actually palpating the SI joint I think is important. When you put a thumb on the SI joint, some people really are uncomfortable and it makes an immediate impression. Compressing the SI joint can create pain and there's also increasing the rotation of the SI joint uh, with forced hip flexion and knee flexion can make a difference as well. Radiographic imaging can be helpful, a CT scan can be helpful. They can show the increased degeneration across the joint. But I think the single most effective diagnostic tool is, a, is an injection. When we inject Novocaine or Lidocaine into that space and the pain goes away, that lets us know that that's the area of concern. When patients are diagnosed with SI joint dysfunction or injury, uh, surgery is not the immediate option. I believe conservative measures should be considered and managed and used to manage the patient's pain. So physical therapy is important, anti-inflammatory medications are important, and injections. For patients that fail conservative treatment, we do have a minimally invasive option that can take care of their pain. In my experience, I enjoy the iFuse system by SI Bone because I find it very easy to use. It's done minimally invasive. Through a very small incision, I can place three threaded implants in approximately an hour. It is 3D printed, it's titanium, it allows bony on growth as well as in growth. I get a great fusion uh, with those implants, I have very little post-operative pain. Patients at two, at two weeks and six weeks recover very well and they can perform the activities that they enjoy doing and in most cases it re relieves all of their pain. I believe patients should give me a call if they continue to have symptoms of low back pain that are undiagnosed. If they have symptoms that we've discussed, I'm happy to evaluate you and please feel free to give us a call and give us that opportunity to help you get back to the activities that you enjoy.